Dear friends, there is a phrase which I rely upon a lot, which I owe to the Catholic theologian James Allison, and which is tremendously helpful in all sorts of contexts. And the phrase is this, God is not in the drama. We've just had the famous reading from 1 Kings, when Elijah meets God in a still small voice of calm. Elijah has been participating in a very dramatic story. He has contested with the priests of Baal, has apparently been vindicated by God, and then flees from the resulting persecution into the mountains. Woe is me, he exclaims, I'm the only one left who is faithful to God. He's telling himself a dramatic story. There is a sequence of dramatic events, the earthquake, wind and fire, and God is not in them. Then, in the silence, Elijah recognises that the real God has arrived, who tells him to anoint his successor, and that there are still 7,000 who have not bent the knee. Elijah has got it all wrong. Most especially the story he has been telling about himself is all wrong. It's too dramatic. It's all about him. Now we need to tell stories about God, not about ourselves. On Sunday I spoke about how Jesus was tempted as we are, yet without sin, and that the difference lies in that whenever Jesus felt the pull of temptation, he brought that pull into dialogue with his love for the Father and the Father's love for him. And each and every time he allowed his relationship with the Father to reign supreme. That, put simply, is what Christian contemplation is all about. Let me provoke you with a request. Please don't think of an elephant. Of course, you're now thinking of an elephant. And to struggle with our wills against thinking of an elephant only makes the fascination stronger. We'll be thinking of elephants all the more. Contemplation is the practice by which we pay attention to what goes on in our mind, but we don't get excited by it. We don't turn it into a drama, or even turn the drama into a crisis. We don't start telling ourselves that the only, we are the only one left who is faithful. So we need to pay attention to the stories that we tell ourselves, for we so often feel we are caught up in a fascinating story. This might be comedy, or tragedy, or rags to riches, or great romance, lots of different stories. But when we understand ourselves in the light of such stories, we go wrong. The point is not, we are interesting, fascinating, wonderful. These are all dramatic. The point is that we are loved. Yes, this is a story, but it's not our story. We are not the centre. And when we are able to, to displace ourselves from the centre of the story we tell ourselves, then this is peace. We are not the author of our stories. God is. We are because God is. So when we start paying attention to the stories that we tell ourselves, the point is not to try and forcibly change what we're saying or what we're thinking. That is simply to keep insisting on the elephant. The point is to pay attention to what is going on, to notice it, but then hand it all over to God. To be aware of what's going on, but not to be concerned about it. Most especially to not be concerned about it if it seems dramatic. Now when we don't do this, we can be captured by patterns of thought. And these patterns of thought were called logismoi by the early fathers, word patterns linked to the word logos, the word. They are identified with the demons, the ones who tempted and attacked the faithful. The thing to remember about the demons is that dealing with them is like spiritual plumbing. It's a necessary job, but it's not normally very dramatic. There is a blockage that needs to be shifted. On rare occasions it might get a bit messy, but it's essentially mundane and routine. In particular, the thing about the demons is that they're fundamentally stupid. Cunning, but stupid. The particular ways in which they attack us will be explored over the coming weeks, as we consider the deadly sins tradition in more detail. But for now, let me share with you the one absolutely surefire way of withstanding them. Humility. Most of the spiritual attack on us is about trying to see ourselves as unlovable, as unworthy, as horrendous in some way. And the Christian response to this is to say, Yes, and <laughs> we're not worthy. This is basic. We are not worthy, and yet God loves us. Recognising the truth of this, and allowing it to change the disposition of our souls, this is the path of Christian contemplation. I would say, contemplation is about recognising that our souls are not at stake in our struggles. Or, to use a more Catholic expression, contemplation is learning to hide in the wounds of Christ. It's not about us. 
We are not the authors of our own stories, and we're not caught up in something dramatic. We're, we are instead caught up in something much simpler. We are loved and we are safe, which means that we can trust. Now here's an extract from Rowan's book. This trust in God is trust in a God who sees us with exactly the clarity we hope and pray for and doesn't turn away. And so when we learn discernment or discrimination, when we learn to see ourselves properly and pick apart some of the positive and the negative impulses as they work themselves out in us, we come to reflect something of God's own freedom from passion, God's own apatheia towards us. God does not see us reactively. God is not roused to fury or disgust by the sight of us, nor is God persuaded to love us because we are so successful. God sees what is there, embraces it in his love, and transforms it in his grace. This is the essence of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen.